guys, how's it going? So today we get to start off by cutting a few buckets full of flowers for a friend's sister's graduation party that's happening tomorrow. And then we are gonna follow that up with planting some fall crops. We've got spinach, butter crunch lettuce, cilantro, French breakfast, radishes, and rainbow Swiss chard. First off, the cut flowers. I did ask if there was some kind of color theme that I should try to stick to because I've got quite a number of different colors out there. I could try to stick to a theme, but I think what they're going for is just fun, colorful, bright. I can do that. I mean, the zinnias are looking especially great and the dahlias are wonderful too. Um, so we'll definitely be able to fulfill there. They're also getting flowers from a couple of her other friends that have cut flower garden spaces. So it'll be fun to see what the bouquets end up looking like because, you know, a lot of us tend to grow dahlias and zinnias. Those are totally normal like standard things to grow in a cut flower garden. But you know, a lot of us like to try different things every year and it may not be the same from garden to garden. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the results. And did you guys notice it seemed like last year in particular, just because a lot of us were at home and a lot of us had more time to cultivate our garden spaces, but it seems like there was a huge uptick in cut flower gardening, like for your own pleasure really in your own space or to grow and give away or to grow and sell either like any of those situations is awesome i think it's a really fun thing to do so i was really excited for the opportunity to cut some flowers today so i've got my buckets here i gave them a kind of a quick clean like not pristine but clean uh, i've got fresh water in them so we are going to head out there and when we're all done cutting we're going to go put them in the root cellar they're going to come by for them this evening but the root cellar is a wonderful place to keep the flowers freshest also we can't drive here because it just got the grass seeded super excited to see that start to grow okie dokie kind of a quick overview we have sunflowers amaranth uh, zinnias celosia stuff over in that quadrant in this one we have gladiolus and dahlias and this one you can see the zinnias they're snapdragons which are coming out of their summer slump and starting to put on new growth so i'm not sure i'm going to get a ton of them picked today for the bouquets but we may get a few i think in even a week or two at these cooler temperatures these are going to really reflush we've got some china asters in here that are looking glorious cosmos aren't in bloom yet but they are getting there they're right here, looking pretty good. There's a number of gaps out here too because we recently finished up the potato and onion harvest. I've got all of those spaces yet to plant and that's where we're gonna do all the seeds in a little bit. And these are the snips I'm gonna use. These are the Felco 322s, which are awesome. I've showed these to you in videos before, but I've really got had a chance to use them a lot this summer and I really enjoy them. These are the longest snips they have. There are a pair of shorter straight ones and curved ones, but I like these the best, the 322s. So anyway, let's get to work. buckets of flowers I did come back up to the barn so that I could put these in the cellar and grab a fourth bucket because I kind of got a little carried away and didn't leave any room for sunflowers we have to have some sunflowers in the mix but we've got a bucket full of gorgeous dahlias and I usually cut in a couple layers so I usually do a short layer down in there and then some that can kind of tower above and that way you can fit a little bit more in a bucket uh, without smushing the flowers but there's just a beautiful array of colors and textures sizes like Look at that really neat one. This one right here is called Noel. It's one of the new ones I grew this year. Just some really beautiful colors here. And I'm really um, excited about my stem length this year. It seems like my stems are just so much longer this year. I don't know why. I didn't pinch a single dahlia, so <laughs> who knows? Uh, this bucket here has a menagerie of things. We've got China asters. Look at that, how beautiful. And then we've got, so the purple, a champagne pink, kind of a medium pink. And then there is a very vibrant pink down in here. Again, I did cut in layers. There's some Black Beauty pink cushion flowers in there, Bells of Ireland in there. And then we've got three varieties of Snapdragons. So Potomac Apple Blossom, Potomac Yellow, Madame Butterfly Bronze. And then this bucket here is just full of zinnias. Shorter layer in there, 
just a menagerie of color. There's some really huge ones. Not worried for that one. I don't want it to be smashed. And it's amazing the different structures you get too. Like that halo right there. And then the really full ones. Ah, love it. Okay, let's get these in the cellar, grab another bucket. So now that that's done, we can run out and plant our seeds. All right, back out in the cut flower garden, I wanted to show you the spots where we're going to be planting. So you can see this row right here. This is where the onions were. And then we had Brussels sprouts right here, which we just harvested last week. I think it was last week and gave them all to the chickens. And I uh, grow Brussels sprouts, just a few plants usually every year, not necessarily to eat because they're not my favorite, but they were a really good host plant for aphids. Um, so they keep aphids away from the stuff that I like, like cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower, those types of things. So Brussels sprouts and calendula work really well as trap crops for aphids. And I did have cabbage planted on either side. Aren't these sunflowers awesome? It's gonna be so pretty. And actually Chad is here right now. Uh, he is getting ready to excavate the little area here so that we can pour the concrete pad for the shed we're putting in the back. I don't think it's gonna be, well, it's not gonna be done in time to see the shed with the rows of sunflowers blooming, but this is something I could repeat. Isn't that so pretty? So this type right here is actually the same as these right here. They're called sunspot. So they stay on the shorter side, but they have these big, beautiful, massive flowers. I think a hedge of teddy bears like this would be really beautiful too. Anyway, so there's a double row of sunflowers planted. You can see the two right here on either side. And then this is where we're gonna plant one of our things. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna plant everything or quantities or any of that. I'll figure that out as I go. Um, but I heavily, heavily amended this area with land and sea because alliums, any type of allium, onions, garlic, are really heavy feeders. So I will be re-amending with Biotone Starter Fertilizer and Land and Sea in this area, as well as these next couple of rows. So back on this side, you can see an open spot right in the center here. This is a row where we had all of our potatoes, which I harvested in two different groups. You can see that. I harvested uh, Huckleberry Golds and Red Norlands from that end, and then I planted Jade Beans in their spot already, which they're all up. And then I harvested Yukon Golds from this end, and we planted Lacinato Kale, California Giants, and Persian Cress. So we have that one section in the middle where we harvested russet burbanks and german butterballs and then the front part of this row right after the cabbage so right here that was all onions the rest of these rows are a little patchy looking honestly right now it's just because i have some crops i've pulled and reseeded like at the end i've got little seedlings coming up um, they're coming just takes them a minute uh, we've just got stuff in process there's some cosmos up here but they're not very big we've got beautiful basil in here pincushion flowers and clary sage and then our larkspurs look a little sad and sorry and that's because they are i'm just actually letting them go to seed so i can gather the seed so i'm just kind of letting them dry they still have some pretty color but they're looking a little mangy at this point point. and right at the end of this row i have some i think this is peach screamer nicotiana got the seeds from florette and i absolutely love love this flower these are also a huge bug attractor though so i hardly ever uh, cut them for arrangements because they just bring in the bugs see right here there's a beetle right there i don't spray anything out here or haven't yet no insecticides out here all right so i've got my land and sea compost biotone starter fertilizer my tool to kind of scratch it all in my seeds my tags and then i do have a way to water them in so aaron just had this done which i thought was so brilliant so we've got a hose link reel here and um one of our friends, her fiance, actually making her bouquet this next month at their wedding, but he's a welder and he came and welded on, uh, like fabricated this piece and welded it on so that we could keep a hose link on a gator. So it's got this lead hose right here that we can attach to faucet, which we have a faucet right over here on the end of a sunflower row. 
and also right here by the Nicotiana. So I just have to drive the gator up to it and then I have a hose that I can water everything in with. Our other hoses, like you can see one over there, and it's just a little difficult because you have to have so much hose to get around all the pumpkins and then come all the way this way. It's just nice to have easy access. So anyway, that's kind of a cool thing and it's, it spins 360. So it goes whatever way you need it to go. Aaron's really good about thinking of ways to make things more efficient and easier, uh, which is not my strong suit. So it's really nice for me to be able to benefit from that. Okay, let's just get all this work done. Got it all planted, which means every row in this garden is now full again. So in this first row here, we have rainbow Swiss chard, which is a really pretty plant. Um, I eat it when it's young and tender, and then I like to give it to the chickens, and I like to use it in flower arrangements as well. Um, but I planted two rows. So on the interior of this run of drip tape and on the interior of this run, and I'll keep the middle one on just until the seeds come up. It'll help keep the area more moist and then I can turn it off once you know the plants have come up. And that just allows me the flexibility to give them more water if they need them. Uh, and if we turn really hot again, I can up the amount of water because you know we run each of these quadrants all in the same zone. Um, so it's nice to have the flexibility. I have kind of gone back and forth as to whether or not I should do just two rows of drip tape or three. I think three is better for me anyway. And then in this section here, First off, I found out there's a wasp nest up in the top of that obelisk. You can see a few flying above there. I think I angered them pretty good. I was messing around around that thing almost the whole time. Anyway, so in this section here, I've got uh, the French breakfast radishes and the cilantro right here. I unearthed a few potatoes in the process that I can gather up. See that? <laughs> There's a few small ones. And then in this row here, I've got the buttercrunch lettuce, which starts right at the end of this cabbage, goes to the white tag. And then spinach starts at the white tag and goes all the way to the end. And having the ability to hook up the hose link right at the end of this row was amazing. Uh, you know, we just had the sprinkler system installed around the cut flower garden so we can seed the grass. Um, while they were at it, we had them trench in uh, from two different sides so we could get two faucets in the interior because I just, it was kind of a problem. And we just thought, well, while you're at it and you have the trencher out, let's put some faucets in here. And I'm so glad we did. They've already come in really handy and that was just done a few days ago. So I think at this point, I've got all of my fall crops in the ground which is such a good feeling um, just to know that you're utilizing your space really well and that's something I want to improve on every year I want to you know learn how to succession plant really efficiently so that I always have something going on and I also want to possibly put in some cover crops out here uh, that we can till in it's just something I'm gonna have to figure out what I want to do and where I want to do that um, and that sort of thing. So anyway, it's all a learning process. It's all really fun and I'm just loving it. Having a great time out here with this space. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.